হ্যালো এভরিওান ডক্টর অভিষেক ধর হিয়ার ফ্রম তালান্তা আজকে আমরা আইজার অ্যাপ্টিটিউড টেস্ট টু থাউজেন্ড যেটাকে আইএটি এক্সাম বলা হয় সে সেই এক্সামের কিছু কোয়েশ্চেন যেগুলো আমার মনে হয়েছে যে ইম্পর্টেন্ট এবং কিছু কোয়েশ্চেন থেকে কিছু নতুন কনসেপ্টও শেখা যাবে তো সেই টাইপের কিছু কোয়েশ্চেন আজকের ভিডিওতে আমরা ডিসকাস করে নেব সো লেটস বিগিন উইথ কোয়েশ্চেন ওয়ান হোয়াট আর দ্য কারেক্ট অর্ডার্স অফ বন্ড লেংথ ডি এক্স এক্স অ্যান্ড বন্ড ডিসোসিয়েশন এনথ্যালপিস বি ডি ই অফ এক্স এক্স ফর এফ টু অ্যান্ড সি এল টু ওয়ার এক্স ইকালস টু ফ্লোরিন অ্যান্ড ক্লোরিন সো দেন ফোর অপশানস আর গিভন ওভার দেয়ার সো হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ টু থিঙ্ক অ্যাট ফার্স্ট এফ এফ বন্ড অ্যান্ড সি এল সি এল বন্ড অ্যাজ ইন গ্রুপ সেভেন্টিন দ্য পজিশন অফ ক্লোরিন ইজ আন্ডার ফ্লোরিন সো অ্যাজ ক্লোরিন ইজ লার্জার ইন সাইজ দ্যান ফ্লোরিন দেন অফ কোর্স বন্ড লেংথ অফ সি এল সি এল বন্ড দ্যাট মিন্স বন্ড লেংথ অফ সি এল সি এল বন্ড অবভিয়াসলি উইল বি গ্রেটার দ্যান বন্ড লেংথ অফ এফ এফ বন্ড অ্যাজ দ্য সাইজ অফ সি এল ইজ হায়ার দ্যান দ্যাট অফ এফ জেনারেলি হায়ার দ্য বন্ড লেংথ লোয়ার উইল বি ইটস বন্ড ডিসোসিয়েশন এনার্জি বাট হিয়ার দিজ জেনারেলাইজ রুল ডাজেন্ট ইউ নো কাউন্ট বিকজ ইন কেস অফ সি এল টু অ্যাজ ক্লোরিন কন্টেন্স লোন পেয়ার অ্যান্ড অলসো কন্টেন্স ভ্যাকেন ডি সো দিজ শর্ট অফ রেজোনেন্স ইজ পসিবল ওভার দেয়ার টু ফর্ম আ পার্শিয়াল ডাবল বন্ড ক্যারেক্টার But in case of fluorine, as F has no vacant orbital, so this sort of pi bond formation is not possible because fluorine lacks any vacant orbital, but chlorine contains vacant D. That's why this partial double bond of uh, CL-CL bond is possible and as here the cl cl bond is getting partial double bond character of course its bond energy and bond dissociation energy will be higher due to this partial double bond character of cl cl bond so bond length of cl cl bond is higher than that of f f at the same time the bond dissociation energy of cl cl bond will be higher than that of f f bond due to this partial double bond character the bond dissociation energy of cl cl bond increases so option a is the correct answer next we'll move to question 2 which combination of elements forms interstitial hydrides uh, this is very common informative short of question is interstitial hydrides if you go through the chapter hydrogen and the d block elements d and a block elements properly you can find this information in the ncrt book written in very you know defined manner so that d block elements uh, which are you know uh, situated in the middle of the d block elements uh, are, are prone to form in interstitial hydrides so sodium magnesium is block they don't iterobium and titanium this will be the answer boron aluminium will not form iron manganese though they are d block but they are 3d elements 3d elements uh, all the 3d elements generally do not form uh, interstitial hydrides but titanium forms and iterobium also forms so yb and ti will be the answer next we'll move to question 3 
a molecular adapt the first thing is that this is a new thing to learn what do you mean by adapt adapt is nothing but a coupling of two words addition plus product generates adapt a molecular adapt is formed between bf3 and et2o that means when bf3 and et2o are added through addition and form a product that will be referred as adapt addition product what is the coordination number that is uh, designated by cn valency v and oxidation state of boron atom in these adapt so at first we have to write down this you know reaction along with the structure of the adapt bf3 reacts with et2o et2o plus bf3 this is basically short of acid base reaction here et2o this diethyl ether will act as lewis base and boron as boron contains vacant p orbital so bf3 can accept electron from outside and it acts as lewis acid so this is basically a acid base reaction so et2o will donate its lone pair to the vacant p orbital of boron to form these adapt this is the react now the question is coordination number of boron so with this boron how many number of atoms are directly attached here three fluorine and one oxygen so of course the coordination number will be four valency so that will be equal to the coordination number as coordination number is four so valency of boron here will obviously be four and oxidation state when here a dative bond is formed dative or coordinate bond you have to remember one thing when a dative bond is formed uh, with the central atom then basically uh, due to the formation of the dative bond no oxidation change happens over there this thing you have to remember when a dative bond is formed no oxidation number i mean no change of oxidation number of the central atom happens over there like what i am saying nh3 if you look the oxidation state of nitrogen here that will be equal to the oxidation state of nh4 plus as well how nh4 plus is being formed when nh3 forms a dative bond with h plus then nh4 plus is formed so what i am trying to explain the oxidation state of nitrogen the value of that and the oxidation state of nitrogen in nh4 plus they, they will be the same so same thing happen over here uh, in case of bf3 to three covalent bonds for three fluorine atoms are there so for three fluorine minus three so that for this boron will get plus three but as this oxygen is forming dative bond like this case it will not contribute anything to the oxidation number of boron so only you have to consider the oxidation number of boron here on the basis of three covalent bonds which are formed by fluorine so plus 3 will be the answer so option a is the correct answer we'll move to question 4 while making paneer from milk by adding dilute acetic acid the milk proteins undergo solubilization degradation denaturation and polymerization this is a question from class 12 uh, biomolecules chapter so this is a very straightforward informative question which you will found you will find in new ncert as well this is basically a uh, you know denaturation this process is referred as denaturation we will go through ncert what the denaturation process is this is basically nothing but uh, you know uh, dissociation and uh, distortion of uh, proteins 
is referred as denaturation so you can uh, go through detail in your textbook uh, from class 12 biomolecules chapter we'll move to question 5 this is an organic question from class 11 basically so this uh, dibromide is there it's a benzene ring is also attached it is at first treated with koh and ethanol it basically acts as base and then another strong base in nh2 so what will happen in case of two strong base one is koh ethanol and another one is nh2 dehydrohalogenation will happen when koh ethanol reacts with this compound then one br from here and one h from here will be removed to form a double bond and after that when it is treated with nnh2 then this br dehydrohalogenation one second happens and this hydrogen and dehydrohalogenation happens from adjacent to carbon atoms so these H and these BR will be liberated in presence of NaNH2 to form another double bond that means triple bond will be generated. Here basically uh, dehydrobromination will occur two times. For the first time dehydrobromination we will get alkene having a BR atom and when it is treated with NaNH2 it will further undergo dehydrobromination to form the corresponding terminal alkyne so you can easily get the structure if we you know uh, liberate uh, the corresponding br and h to get the triple bond and you will find the structure is nothing but option b next we'll move to question six so benzamide is treated with br to ethanolic koh when this is a very straightforward hoffman degradation reaction so when benzamide is being treated with br2 and ethanolic koh we'll get rnh2 from rconh2 so here aniline will be formed and when it is again treated with br2 in presence of water uh, a polar solvent and as nh2 has plus r effect so in presence of a polar solvent nh2 simultaneously activates two four and six position uh, like phenol like oh group oh also has the same plus r effect like nh2 so here the product will be this one in two four six position three br will be inserted 246 tribromoaniline will be the answer so option a is the correct answer we'll move to question 7 benzene diazonium chloride when it is heated with ethanol then what we are getting benzene plus another compound x plus n2 plus hcl what is x we have to identify so at first you just look at the reaction once more what the thing is happening over here from in from these compound benzene diazonium chloride into cl group is removed and instead of that one h is inserted over here one h is inserted over here right that's why you are getting benzene as h is inserted over here so of course here reduction is happening here reduction is happening the first thing so which acts as reducing agent as benzene diazonium chloride is being reduced so of course ethanol is acting as reducing agent and we all know reducing agent itself oxidizes so here in this reaction ethanol will be oxidized so ch3 ch2oh it will be oxidized oxidized by which substance this one benzene diazonium chloride but benzene diazonium chloride is a weak oxidizing agent so here one step oxidation will occur we will get aldehyde not the acid the primary alcohol will be oxidized to aldehyde and the reaction will be seized 
it will not further be oxidized to corresponding acid as here the oxidizing agent benzene diazonium chloride is a mild oxidizing agent like pcc or pdc that's it so acetaldehyde is the correct answer this is a very conceptual question next we'll move to question eight this is a straightforward nave question uh, direct from the examples of uh, huckel's rule of aromaticity which is aromatic so this is the first option this is uh, as this is sp3 hybridized so this is non planar so this one is non aromatic this is another sp3 so this becomes tetrahedral and non planar so it is once more non aromatic this one this one is aromatic cyclotropylium ion because here six pi electrons are present cyclic conjugations are there and planar of course because all the carbon atoms over here are sp2 hybridized and this one this is referred as cot cyclooctatetraene uh, uh, due to its tub shaped structure uh, it is basically it becomes um, non planar in nature and so it basically non aromatic so they have asked uh, which is aromatic so cyclotropylium and that means option c is the correct answer well that's all for today's session and um, hope you have got uh, some new information some good logic from this video don't forget to like the video and don't forget to share it with share it with your friends and uh, well signing off for now see you soon